So the method that we need to write next is we need, we prompted the user, this was a little while ago now, but we prompted the user to type in a key phrase. And you may remember that we use that key phrase to create the substitution alphabet for the encryption. What we have to watch out for is that if the key phrase has duplicate letters, we need to get rid of the duplicate letters because our substitution alphabet can't have duplicate letters, right? We can't map a given letter to like two different letters. That's not going to work. Um, so this, this method that we're going to write together um, is going to do that. It's going to remove all duplicate letters from the key phrase. And in, in the course of writing this, we're going to see four new methods of the string class that we haven't used before. So in the first unit, we focused on some methods of the string class, like to uppercase, to lowercase, replace. In um, this unit, we're going to focus on some additional methods of the string class. And we'll do even more in the next unit, but we'll do some additional ones here. So here's what our method header is going to look like. It's going to be another public static method. It's going to return a reference to a new string. That new string is going to be the key phrase without duplicates. We're going to call that the compressed key phrase. So we're going to name this method compress key phrase. And it's going to take a single parameter of type string. And that's going to be the original key phrase that the user enters. So let's document this with our java.comment slash star star enter. What does this method do? Well, it compresses the specified key phrase by removing all duplicate letters. Is that thunder? Wow. All right. So our parameter, key phrase, it is the key phrase to compress. And we have a return value, which is the new a reference to a new string, which is the key phrase with all duplicate letters removed. Cool. So we're going to create a local variable called compressed key phrase. And for now, we'll initialize it to an empty string. And we're going to go through the key phrase letter by letter. And if the letter is not a duplicate, we'll add it to this, we'll concatenate it to this variable compressed key phrase um, and build that up over time step by step. All right, so there's four string methods we're interested in. We're just going to do a couple today. First method, slash star. We're going to document each of these as we go. So length is our first new string method we're going to use. The length method returns the number of characters in the string. So we can have a local variable of type int called key phrase length, and we'll assign it the value returned by calling the length method on the string referenced by key phrase. <coughs> so if our key phrase was Caesar, Caesar has six letters, the length returned would be six. All right, here we've hit a little bit of a chicken and egg problem. I want to go through each letter in the key phrase, and we're going to check if it's a duplicate or not, because this is a great opportunity to see these other string methods that, are, that we're going to study in this particular unit. Um, but we need a looping structure to look at each letter, and we're not going to do looping structures until the next unit. So I'm going to write a for statement here. We will go into for statements in detail in the next unit. For now, um, I'll just explain it from like a pseudocode perspective. So here's what the syntax looks like for what we want for going through this. This is not like the four statements in Python with which you might be familiar. But for the purposes, for our purposes today, just think about it this way. This local variable i will first be set to zero, and then one, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, 
is if the length is six. So it's gonna always start at zero and it's gonna go up to, but not including um, key phrase length in this case. Yeah, yep. But we're, we're gonna use that variable elsewhere, so it's handy to store it somewhere. But yes, absolutely. All right, let's do our last method. One more method for today. It's called char at. What does the char at method do? It returns the character of type char at the specified index. And in Java, our index is um, our index is what is called zero based. And I'll add a comment here to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, good news: indices in Java for strings behave exactly like indices in Python for strings. And in general, most computer languages are consistent on this. We like to start counting at zero. So for example, if our key phrase is Caesar, A-E-S-A-R, the indices would start at zero. So the index of the first character is index zero. And then one, two, three, four, five. So again, the length of this string is six characters. I'm going to label this indices. So the length is six characters, but the indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. The index of the last character will always be less one less than the length. So we could create a local variable called letter and assign it to key phrase char at where we left off, we are working on the compress key phrase method. And the purpose of this method is uh, to take the specified key phrase um, and remove all duplicate letters and return that new key phrase with all duplicate letters removed. Okay? Um, in the context of this method, we're exploring several different string methods as, as we go. Um, we started by creating a local variable compressed key phrase and initializing it to the empty string, just two double quotes, nothing in between. Um, and then we focused on the length method, was the first string method we learned. And the length method returns the number of characters in the string. Everything counts as a character. Space, return, a digit, a comma, everything's a character. Um, we did need this for loop, and again, we're, we'll study that more in the next unit. For now, I will start off with a value of zero the first time it runs, and then it will have a value of one, and two, and three, and up to, but not including the length of our key phrase. So we're gonna keep using this as an example in the comments as we go to make it a little bit more concrete. Let's say key phrase was Caesar, so that has a length of six. Um, we, we saw that each individual character has its own index, and so the first character has an index of zero, and then one and two and so on and so forth because we're zero based indexing in Java just like we are in, in Python. Okay, so there's a nice similarity there. Um, we're gonna keep building on this today. And so the next method we want to explore, oh, so just to wrap up, so we use the char at method to get the single character at the specified index. So for example, if i has a value of zero, the character that would be returned is the letter c. Okay. So we just grabbed the first letter. Um, and what we want to now do eventually is say, like, is this letter repeated in the rest of the string? The first step there is to figure out what is the rest of the string. Okay. So we're going to learn our next method for the string class. And our next method for the string class is the substring method. The substring method returns part of the string, um, and it takes one or two arguments. Um, it's part of the string starting at the first index and going up to, but not including, 
the second index. That's often how we use it. We pass in two indices. It starts at the first index and goes up to, but not including the second index. Um, that's just like the substring method in Python, completely consistent. We also can choose to only pass one argument. So if only one index is specified, um, what it does is it returns part of the string starting at the index through the end of the string. So if we only pass specify one argument, it's kind of like a shortcut where it's going to be like, hey, start at the specified index and go through the rest of the string. And that's what we're going to want in, in this case. That behavior is also consistent with Python. So there, that's another piece of good news. Um, here's the one piece of bad news compared to Python. Substring in Java does not support negative indices. So in, in Python, we could say negative 2 to be the second to last character. We cannot do that in Java. So for example, um, instead of using negative 2, we actually have to calculate it. So we can't say negative 2, but we would specify key phrase dot length minus 2. So it's a little bit more work in Java to do this, um, but not too bad. So we, we get the length of the string, we subtract 2 to get the index of the second to last character. We just can't use negative 2 directly. I'm going to copy and paste the same part of the comment here because I think it's helpful for us to continue to see this example of, hey, the key phrase is Caesar, um, and then we're going to see Let's write the substring call and actually see what um, substring we're going to have. So we'll create a local variable called rest of key phrase. So I want this to be the key phrase, the rest of the key phrase after um, the letter that we just grabbed. So on the key phrase string, we will call substring and pass as an argument i plus 1. So if i is 0, let's say, the letter we would grab would be the c. i plus 1, 0 plus 1 would be 1. So this substring method would start at the letter a and go up through and include it, up through the rest of the string because we're only passing one argument here. So we'd have a, e, s, a, r included in our rest of key phrase string. And, and just... To be clear, because I want it so you can see both ways of using sub substring, that line of code is the same as doing key phrase dot substring i plus one, and then explicitly specifying the second parameter, which is the index to go up to but not including. Um, to go all the way to the end of the string, it would be key phrase dot length. So the length in our example is six, so we'd go up to but not including the character at index. 6, which is good because the last index is 5. That's the last character that we want. So this is how, this is an example of using the substring method. So at this point, we've grabbed a single letter out of our key phrase. We now have the rest of the key phrase from the index beyond that letter. Um, and now what we need to do is basically check and say, hey, the letter that we extracted, is it in the rest of this key phrase? That is, is it a duplicate letter? That's the question we ultimately want to ask. And the method we use to help us answer that question is the index of method. The index of method basically searches a string for a specified substring. And a specified substring could be a single character, it could be in an, uh, several characters, um, whatever it is we're searching for. So the index of method returns the index of the start of the first occurrence
of the specified string. If it occurs multiple times, we get the index of the first occurrence. That's it. Well, what if it doesn't find it? Well, if not found, it returns negative 1. So let's update our little example here in terms of what if key phrase was Caesar and I was 0, what will be the value of rest of key phrase? Well, rest of key phrase will be the characters A, E, S, A, R with indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, these are the indices and a length of 5. So if we're searching rest of key phrase for the letter C, C isn't in the rest of the key phrase. So it would return negative 1. If we were happen to be searching the rest of the key phrase for the letter S, it would return the index of the S, which would be 2. Okay. And it doesn't have to be a single character either. So. All right, so here's let's capture this index. So we're going to have a local variable called index. And on the variable rest of key phrase, which references a string, we'll call the index of method. And the string we're searching for is the letter. Um, that letter, in this case, C, for example. And so if it's found, the value of index will be the index where it is found. And if it's not found, the value of index will be negative 1. So the question we were trying to answer is, is this letter duplicated? And now we, we have our answer. If the value of index is negative 1, the letter is not duplicated. And we want to actually include it in our compressed key phrase. Okay. So we're going to use the string concatenation operator to build up this compressed key phrase letter by unique letter. Um, and we've seen string concatenation before, but there's some new subtleties now that we can better appreciate. So as a reminder, string concatenation, um, the plus symbol in the right context is the string concatenation operator. We saw that in the previous unit. Um, and what we mean by string concatenation is we squish two strings together into one larger string. So it concatenates the second string operand to the end of the first string operand. But now that we've learned more about types, um, I think we have better appreciation for um, or we can dive into the details of when is the plus symbol string concatenation and when is it simply addition? How does the Java runtime decide? Um, so this is what the Java runtime does. If one, just one, or both, both is fine, but if one or more operands are a string type, then the plus symbol is the string concatenation operator. And what that means, the implications of that, is that the operands are converted to strings, to string objects. Okay. So if, if one operand is of a string type and the other operand is not of a string type, that other operand will be converted to a string, and then string concatenation will occur. Okay. It's kind of like arithmetic promotion that we were looking at previously. Otherwise, if neither operand is of a string type, then plus is simply the addition operator, as expected. This behavior, where if one of the operands is a string and the other operand is not a string, this behavior of converting that other operand to a string is super convenient. And in fact, we often use string concatenation. It's just a really easy way to convert an int or a double into a string. 
Um, so here's an example of that. Let's say we have int x equals 7, and we want to convert this into a string. We can't change the type of x. It's going to always be an int. But we can create a new variable of type string, xs string. And the easiest way to convert the value of x to a string is to concatenate it with the empty string. And that will put the value of 7 the string into the variable x as string. So again, with the empty string is, is a pair of double quotes with nothing in between, but it's still a string. It just happens to be a string with no characters. And so because the double quotes, the empty string is a string and x is not, the, very, the value of x7 will be converted to a string, and then string concatenation will occur, which gives us 7 as a string. So keep this in mind as an easy way to convert an int or a double um, or any primitive type to a string. So, Really any type, like through the two string method, like we could do that as well, so. So now we have the answer to our question, so now we can actually concatenate to compressed string. And we are gonna write an if statement here, which we're not gonna dive into to the next unit, but I'll write pseudocode next to it. So if index equals negative one, double equals negative one, from a pseudocode perspective, we're gonna say, if the letter is not a duplicate, that's really the question we're asking. If the letter is not a duplicate, then we do want to concatenate it to compressed key phrase. That variable we created at the very beginning, that was an empty string, equals the current string compressed key phrase plus letter. This is another example of string concatenation. Compressed key phrase is a string, maybe the empty string, but it's still a string. Letter is not a string. Letter is a char, it's a character. Um, but, be, but because one operand is a string, letter will be converted to a string, which is exactly what we want. And then it will be concatenated with compressed key phrase. We could have, this is the same code, I wanted to do it this way to explicitly show you the string concatenation. You could say compress key phrase plus equals letter. Okay? Those two lines are equivalent. So this, this um, curly bracket here finishes the if statement. This curly bracket here finishes the for loop from up above. After both of those, but before the curly bracket that ends our method, we can now return compressed key phrase. So the value of compressed key phrase will be the original key phrase with, with all duplicates removed. So this is the last method we needed for our Caesar cipher class. Um, now we just need to add a couple of methods at the top, and we will be done. And we can run this thing and see what it, how it works. So let's scroll all the way up to the main method at the top. And we haven't looked at this in a while. So as a reminder, we have prompted the user to enter the text to encrypt, and we've saved that. And we've prompted the user to enter the key phrase, and we've saved that. And we prompted the user to enter, well, how many seconds does it take to test a guessed key phrase? And we saved that in the local variable. So now we can actually call these methods that we wrote, and then do the actual encryption. The methods that actually do the encryption and that calculate how much total time it would take on average to crack the encryption, I wrote those there at the end of this code. As an extension, you're certainly um, encouraged to go look at them if you're curious as to how they work. Um, they definitely use some language features we won't study until next, the next chapter. Um, 
All right, so first things first. Let's prepare the key phrase by removing duplicate letters. That's the method we just wrote. So we'll say key phrase equals, we'll reuse the available key phrase. We're just going to assign it a reference to a new string. All of these methods we've been writing have been static methods as we learn what a static method is to kind of practice that. So therefore, we call these methods on the class. Um, we have not made a Caesar cipher object. So we'll call the compressed key phrase method and we'll pass key phrase as the argument. It will return a reference to a new string, which is the key phrase with all duplicates removed. One of the methods I wrote is to calculate the average time to crack, and we're going to assign the value that returns to a long variable called average time to crack. And again, this is another static method called calculate time to crack. And again, it's implemented at the bottom if you want to take a look. And it takes two arguments. It takes the length of the key phrase. We're assuming that the enemy at least knows the length of the key phrase, but they don't know what the key phrase is. And it includes how many seconds it takes to guess a, or to test a particular guess. That's going to return a really big number of seconds, which is why we previously wrote a method to format that and print that in a more understandable fashion. So that's Caesar cipher. It's another static method called print average time to crack. That's the method we wrote that converts it into years and days and hours and minutes as well as seconds. Uh, there's something wrong here. What did I do wrong? Oh, the method, I'm sorry, the method is called calculate average time to crack. It should be calculate average time to crack. And then we can finally actually encrypt this thing. So I'm going to create a local variable encrypted text assign it the reference to the new string returned by calling the encrypt method on the Caesar cipher class where we pass in the text and the key phrase. And then I'm going to print it because I think it'd be cool to see what it actually looks like. So try this out. Compile it, run it, type in a message and everything, um, see what it looks like encrypted, and see how long it would take on average to crack in a brute force manner.